We are gathered here together to commemorate the death of one of our favorite institutions. Would you like to say anything about this? We're uh, elated to be here, but also, you know, a little bit bittersweet here. Yeah. What's the sweet part of it exactly? Uh, the good years that we have here. <laughs> okay. Like Any seeing your performances, for example. Oh, thank you, thank you. And this, Un this is Catherine. She actually took courses with Tom Becker. Hello, Catherine Ferris. Do you have any, you know, anything you'd like to say about how you feel today on this great date of the possible last film kitchen? Well, I know I know a lot of people are bummed, you know, that maybe this might, might be uh, the end of a, an era, but... Um, on the other hand, people are excited. I'm, I'm excited to see the film better. Yeah, I think it'll be a good show. What about you, sir? What do you have to oh, say I, about I, tonight? I say I have arrived. <laughs> and I'm not leaving. Go ahead, feel free to open the door. Okay. That'll just become part of the shot for me. Thank you. Well, the gang's all here. you have any 35 millimeter projectors you're throwing out? Not that I know of. I just need to leave the place tonight. <laughs> That's what it needs I'm just to kidding! Me. Hello. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Is there a five dollar admission tonight or what? Oh uh, yeah, no, my wife got held up. I'm still annoyed with myself about missing Wednesday. Well, you missed yeah. Friday and Saturday too. Yeah. Bad person. <laughs> Bad. No, those I couldn't make. Uh, I could have made Wednesday. I Wednesday just, was great. I yeah, have I, to say. I was at home. Yeah. But, yeah. That was probably my favorite night just because it had the most variety by yeah, the most people. Yeah. Yeah. No. It was a yeah. Treat. Yeah, it was really good. I thought about warning you about that. Sorry about that. It's all your fault. It's all your tonight. fault. Or yours. It's all your fault. I know. No, and it's yours. What's your excuse there, buddy? Yeah, no, what's yours? Something we're going to have a good show tonight. Hence, showing a movie. I think the audience is going to enjoy it. It's five minutes long. I, I don't think the audience is going to like it at all. They've never liked anything by that guy. He's the main reason why Filmmakers is going under. Because they supported crap like that by that... Lunatic's a fringe character. No, what excuse do you have? I'm, I'm the reason filmmakers are going on. What's that? I'm the reason the, the the going on. Uh, are you really? Okay, well, would you like to explain that for me? Well, yeah, I, uh, the uh, education program, that was that was the public explanation given by the, by the uh, criminal who used to run the place. Ah. Uh, was that the education pro the failure of the education program was the uh, reason uh, for all the debt. Well, I never believe that shit. I never believe any public relations stuff ever. It's always a cover up for the real criminals, who are always the people who are making the most money. So I say, look to the people who made the most money, and they're the problem. <laughs> I didn't get any of it. You'll have to do a retake. No, I did very little. You'll have to do a retake. You jabber walkie. I, uh, you know, I'm not as sad as I used to be because I've been grieving this place for three fucking years. And now I'm ready for the next step. But I do appreciate all of the collaborations and friendships that I made here. And it was a great job. I mean, it was the best job a photographer could have in this town. So there. Bless you. Did you get that? Yes, you did. <laughs> it was. It was the best job. There were no, there's so many full-time photo jobs, right? And I got it. I had it. And now I will figure something else out. I remember when they first hired me as a molecular biologist here and how gratifying it was until they realized they made a mistake. <laughs> See you guys. We are gathered here today to lament the passing 
of one of the only institutions left in Pittsburgh that was actually supportive of my work and possibly the last one left that will the, contribute a substantial amount to my being able to thrive in this city. So if I were a morning dove, maybe I would do something like this. My name is Unfinished Symphonies. And why are you delusional? I am delusional because I'm an artist. I'm very optimistic. Some people would call it optimistic. <laughs> Regular people would probably call it delusional. But I think it's all it's all going to work out. I'm changing the culture every day. So what do you think is going to happen with this place, then? This place is going away, but the concept of Film Kitchen is continuing at Regent Square. Business as usual. September's already booked. I'm going to go in October. See, changing the culture. All right. All right. Uh, thank you for your optimism. You're the only person here who has it, but that makes you very special. <laughs> I am very special. This is a funeral. This is a funeral. It is. Would you like to identify yourself? Mary. What's that? Would you like to identify yourself for the camera? I'm Mark Nobile, a very tangential member of uh, Pittsburgh Filmmakers. I was like too cool. You know? But, man, now that it's fading, I am so fucking pissed off. Me too. So fucking pissed off. Look at all this energy. Look at all these people. Look at all. I know, but this young, is the last time. People, this is the last time you're going to see all of these people together. Incredible. Food people. Actors. Directors. The new way, David Burns. There's Gary. The old way. The and old way. <laughs> all right, Gary. Oh, yeah. What do I you like have to say for yourself today? Remember the good time. Yep, I do. That's one of the reasons why I'm here. This will, might be the last good time here, but I, I plan to enjoy it. Or the last time here, but it's good time. Why are you here, and what do you have to do with tonight's program? I should answer. I'm Dave Renevo. I'm listed as co-curator of the Film Kitchen, which is why I'm here. I didn't curate anything except my own video in it. Uh, so I'm here to see the, the videos for Film Kitchen. Do you think that that false credit that you got is indicative of one of the reasons why filmmakers is going under? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't really think so. Maybe not. But you are a very prolific creative person in Pittsburgh. Are you a nice guy on top of that, or are you an asshole? Uh, usually nice, I think. <laughs> that was one of those impossible to answer questions, Maybe obviously. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think you're a nice guy. I'd put you in the nice guy category. <laughs> All right. Who are you, and what the fuck do you think you're doing here? My name is Fat Man B, and I am a former student at... Pittsburgh Filmmakers, and I'm here to shoot a lot of selfies, and I'm calling the series Selfies at a Funeral. I love this building, and I'm very sad that we're selling it. And what about you? What the fuck is your name, and what the fuck are you doing here? What makes you think you deserve to exist? Uh, uh um, uh. You confused me! <laughs> He couldn't have said it better, folks. All right, you are Villa Driscoll, and you are responsible for the founding of the Film Kitchen. Partly, not entirely. Who else deserves any credit? The idea actually was uh, the former editor of Pittsburgh City Paper named Andy Newman, who said, hey, maybe we should partner with some people, the paper that is, who I worked for at the time, we should partner with people to showcase local filmmakers. So. Andy and uh, recruited me because I was the film reviewer for City Paper at the time. And we got together with Waterwall Studios, which is a design company, Pittsburgh filmmakers, and a couple other people, and put together a film kitchen. And it debuted in September of 1998, I believe. That's the way I remember it. And, uh, and uh, we sold out the very first one. They didn't all sell out, but we, I, I did it for nine years. I was the host and curator, so I picked all the films, and I also hosted almost every event up through that time. And it was great. We would average like 78 people a show. 
uh, almost all the money went to the filmmakers themselves. We usually have three a night. It was mostly local people. It was three dollars entrance, which included food and beer. In the back in the day, right? It's a little. It's five now, I guess, right? Right. Uh, but it was three dollars right back then. And not only is that all true and absolutely wonderful. But you used to write a full-page article about it, and there used to be a full-page ad promoting it, which is one of the reasons why they had full houses so much. I think so, yeah. I mean, the, the, the uh, publicity certainly helped, although a lot of it, I noticed, had to do with how many people, individual filmmakers would bring, right? If you had filmmakers with big tribes, you would usually have better houses. Yeah. But, but there was also two other things connected to Film Kitchen. There was Film Kitchen TV. which was a cable TV show that you and Gordon Nelson co-curated. And then there was a very brief-lived thing that happened at the Shadow Lounge that was a film kitchen uh, event that you may even not remember because it only happened yeah, one time. It was upon my face, I guess, but I do not remember it. Uh, well, it did happen. It was a thing where <laughs> those of us who had participated in, in Film Kitchen were invited to to a program that showed a kind of retrospective of work that had been shown and were given free food, etc. Okay. It was a really nice after, thing. Okay, you sure it wasn't after I was done? No, no, it was, I'm pretty sure you were still around. Maybe it was All after right. you. All right. But what do you have to say about the Film Kitchen TV? Gordon Nelson, who was a filmmaker in Pittsburgh and was heavily associated with Pittsburgh filmmakers as an instructor, student, and everything else, we did this show for PCTV. We not only curated it, but we produced and shot it and everything else, um, and did maybe a dozen of these uh, profiles of local filmmakers, including you. I'm tentatively a convenience, and I'm a sprocket scientist, or at least that's what we're here to talk about today. Uh... Well, obviously it's a pun. Since I'm a homonymphonemiac, I use puns a lot. On this uh, program, and we, so we did it for maybe a year, a year and a half, something like that. But it was great. It was a nice way to highlight those folks. And we had records of them. The tapes still exist somewhere. I put one of them online, the one of me that yeah, I had, I put online. Uh, well, I'd like to personally shake your hand. Because I think you're a fabulous person who has always been, as they say, an asset to Pittsburgh culture, and that without you, Pittsburgh would have been so boring I would have fallen asleep and never woken up again. Wow. So thank you. Well, that would have been a loss, too. <laughs> and you know, I enjoy his radio show. I don't actually have a radio show. Oh, I consider it the Cabello Disco <laughs> Radio Hour. <laughs> thank yes, you. He has moved on to... I don't know, more radio wave pastures. Yes, pastures, yes. They put me out the pasture. But thank you, Tent. That was very kind of you. Uh, you deserve every you kind word anybody could ever give you. Thank you again, and goodbye. Bye-bye. you to say something of incredible importance so that when this goes down <laughs> in holographic stone in the future, people will pay rapt attention to you and try to revive you from the fragments of DNA they have left. Well, it's, it's not worth it. That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'll say that. Well, <laughs> I'm Matthew Day, the host and curator of the Pittsburgh Film Kitchen. Woo! It's a very special night tonight. This show is a celebration of Pittsburgh filmmakers, of the school, of the theaters, of the people, and of the community. And we're going to see about an hour and a half of content tonight that all reflects that. Uh, film Kitchen is a monthly film screening series held the second Tuesday of each month. I think I'm the third host of Film Kitchen. For the first time that I'm aware of, the original host of Film Kitchen is actually here in the audience tonight. 
quite an honor. Bill O'Driscoll is here tonight. I see a lot of friends, teachers who are also friends. I guess what I'm saying is I see a lot of my favorite parts of the filmmaking community, of the Pittsburgh filmmakers community, here in this theater tonight. I think it's amazing. So I'm just going to keep this short. That's really all I have to say. Um, well, one other thing I want to say is it's about Film Kitchen and the thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that have gone back to local artists. So when you guys buy a ticket for Film Kitchen, that money doesn't just go to filmmakers. The majority of that goes back to the actual artists screening that night. So thanks to your patronage, thanks to you guys coming out to see these movies, you are actually funding the filmmakers that are showing here, and you're allowing them to make movies in the future. I think that's just the best relationship you can have between filmmakers, arts, and an audience. Woo! Yeah. So originally we thought next month would be at the uh, Regent Square, but I just received a note saying that filmmakers will, uh, Film Kitchen will be here in September. Woo! Filmmaker's new CEO is uh, just stepped into the theater. I don't know if you guys have met him yet. Dan, I don't even know your last name. Would you introduce yourself? You walk up right here. Yeah, come on up. We got some ready to do. <laughs> I think the mic's working, so we're just projecting. Okay. Good evening. Um, yes, we're going to have another movie here in September. And um, maybe one in October, who knows? But we are in the midst of, as you know, vacating the building, which has been going on for a while. Uh, but uh, we do have another location to show these movies also. And it's at 6300 Fifth Avenue, which is the big 100-year-old building called Marshall. So please continue to come. Uh, have a good time. Happy to see that the house is sold out. It's wonderful. And uh, thank you. But I'm, I'm glad that I came because I've only been here a month. And I heard people behind the concession stand saying, This is the last movie. I said, Oh, nobody told me. So um, it's not. Continue to come. Enjoy. <laughs> Start the show. I'd like to thank our sponsors: Pittsburgh Filmmakers, Pittsburgh Center for the Arts, Mellinger's Beer Distributor, Fat Brothers Pizza, and WPTF, Pitt Radio Station. Yeah. I'd also like to say that uh, this Saturday and Sunday at the Regent Square at 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. the Miss Education of that's it. And in the uh, 2018 Silk Screen Film Festival will be happening happening in uh, September. So that will be at the Pittsburgh Filmmakers Theater. All right. So unfortunately, I forgot the program tonight when I came over here. It is so extensive, and it took a while to get everything together. People were sending me material up to the very last minute. I'm going to try and name everyone we have here just quickly. But after the program's over, we're going to have everybody come up. It's not going to be so much a Q&A tonight, it's just a discussion. We're just going to talk about these movies and our, our love of filmmakers. So off the top of my head, I'm just looking around the room. Who's, who's screening tonight? Tentatively convenient to screening tonight. <laughs> Will Zavala, John Cantine, Chris Smalley, Brady uh, Lewis, Beth Bradley. I'm bringing somebody raw. Carolina, Loyola, Garcia, <laughs> uh, David Bernabo. I also want to thank David Bernabo and Chris Mulling for helping me curate this month's show. Ross, Ross Nugent will be showing uh, 16 millimeter at the end of the uh, program. I'm sure I forgot some names. Oh, Emmett Frisbee is showing uh, movies tonight. So <laughs> the program, uh, I am showing us too. Yes. Uh, you're going to see a whole lot of familiar faces. So the digital component of the program runs about an hour and 20 minutes, and then Ross will be projecting 
16 millimeter film after that for about 10 minutes. Yay! Alright, so that's our program tonight. Roll it. Filmmakers, with rules that are strictly enforced to keep people working in the building safe and equipment and facilities secure. Any behavior that jeopardizes the safety of other students and members or endangers the facility or equipment will result in immediate termination of all access. Surveillance cameras are in place for your protection and to ensure that equipment office policies are followed when the staff may not be present. The first step to working after hours is being in the building and working before the equipment office closes. Once the doors are locked at closing time, no one is permitted to enter the building. To continue working after hours, you must sign your name on the after hours record sheet placed outside the in-house equipment office window. Failure to sign out will result in a fine. When you leave, you must write the time and sign your name.
director of an alphabet soup known as PFPCA. And I'm here today to introduce you to and to welcome you to 3RFF. We were fairly contemporary supplies of filming because I was a broke freewheeling youngster and by the time I left I was a broke mother of two. Joe Morrison called me to come down for a formal interview. Joe was outside on a cigarette break. We talked for about five minutes and Joe said, okay, you got the job. I didn't even go in the building. It had a, a kind of punk out. We're going to see about eight minutes of uh, 16 millimeter film that uh, Ross Nugent was going to project. Take Ross a minute or two to get things set up. A few more people I want to thank for tonight. Uh, just see the posters that were out in the uh, outer gallery. Uh, well, thank you for everyone for putting those together. That was uh, Stephen Hines, Karen Antonelli, and Deborah Hoskins. Uh, anybody else uh, help them with that? Tom Fisher. And Tom Fisher. And speaking and of Ryan time, designed a lot. Of them. Oh yeah, and Ryan, the two seconds here tonight. He designed a lot of them. <laughs> Speaking of Tom Fisher and Stefano, uh, they are here tonight uh, recording testimonials from people about filmmakers, and they are set up currently in the uh, Mini Melwood. So they'll be here for a little while after the show tonight if you want to say some words on camera about filmmakers. I can't remember Stefano's name, and he lived, grew up on the same street as me. Which, thank you. Ross, uh, how much time do you need? Uh, I'm good. I just got to check on Smokey. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to check out Smokey the Projectionist, who, this is the first time he's worked here since 2016, so it's pretty nice to have him back up there. That's one of his best projecting jobs ever tonight. Also, I have a change.org uh, uh, thing, a petition, and over 1,700 people signed it, so I'll post this picture in it tomorrow. It's still active. We could, in theory, have our first sit-in right here, right now, and just nobody go. <laughs> or we could, that's how they saved August Wilson. They just said it. Anyways, I'll do the selfie. <laughs> everybody smile. Yeah. Okay, now frown. Frown. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
Carolina. Uh, Dave? Tent. <laughs> So we're all here tonight. So many things meant a lot to us. Some of it was our job. Some of it was, I think, all of us had a job here. One point. Yep. Yep. Something we're all very passionate about. Uh, where, where am I going with this? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'd like to say, just like watching some of those last pieces, I, I mean that everyone knows what happened over the past two years and. And with Mandy's petition, 1,700 people signed that petition, and people Woo! followed the Post Gazette articles, and a lot of those comments in the Post Gazette articles, and and Bill O'Driscoll's long uh, piece that he put out uh, recently, and even people posting things on on Facebook, and everyone making these comments. So and I've read a lot of those things and, and 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 thought about it, but then I see like Brady's film tonight, yeah. and Chris's film tonight and listening to their words and looking at those images and seeing in people's eyes when they were speaking film which is what we're all here for or what we've been here for is a real experiential yeah. thing it's that's why the audience is here it's experiential and it's so much i find stronger than those articles that i read or the postings that i read and it's hard to sort of get this across what we saw tonight through the written word. Yeah. And that's what I'm sorry that a lot of those people that made the decisions over the past year were basing it on the lack of involvement in what these guys produced tonight. That's all. The, the moving image is just such an overwhelming experiential sort of event that it's uh, that's why we're all here. That's why we're about to be. Kleenex. Woo! So, Brady and Chris, what was that like for you, going back through your archive of uh, old films? Well, it, uh, you called me Friday. I started on a Saturday. I sort of put me on. It was, uh, it was a kind of a whirlwind, but it was, you know, it was nostalgic because I know. You know, most of the people in those things, some of them I don't quite remember, but, uh, you know, I knew most of, most of those people way back. So it was really, it was fun. It was really interesting to find that. I had to find the stuff and then get in here and transfer it and then <coughs> edit it. So, um, you called me up like three times a day. Yeah, yeah right. I right. Days, right. Yeah, I actually, Gary, uh, it triggered my uh, memory on a couple of things that, that I then used, like the fact that he and I were... Uh, passing a flask back and forth after the fire. I didn't remember that until he reminded me. Perfect. So, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it was, it was fun. Chris, how about for you? Yeah, I mean, uh, it took a lot longer than I expected, I will say, going through all the different hard drives and like finding a lot of like old videos that I'd worked on um, years and years and years ago, kind of going through some outtakes. Uh, it was, but it was fun looking through that. And, uh, Jared Larson, who happens to be in the audience tonight, shot a lot of the uh, <laughs> a lot of the stuff uh, when we first started taking classes together. So some of the stuff that I was in, that old Super 8, uh, I kind of got in contact with him. And uh, yeah, no, it was uh, definitely like emotional to kind of go through all that and kind of go through the whole steps of everything that sort of happened throughout the years of filmmakers. And Try to condense it into a short enough movie that uh, anyone would want to watch. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I did that or not, but. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> anyone in the audience has a question, please feel free to throw up your hand. John, you showed a lot of class shoots tonight and things from a little while back. Um, so, of course, I picked the ones I wasn't in. Just right. I know. I was class disappointed in that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wanted the one where you ate the ice cream. Uh, it's it's still my favorite. So what's it like for you going through all this? Because you're, do you still teach here right now? I do. I just finished my last class at the what beginning of August. My last class. <coughs> how long have you been working? This will be the first semester in how yeah. long that you don't work at filmmakers? Uh, eighty-eight. Nineteen eighty-eight. Twenty years. Started. At thirty years. That's thirty years. Thirty years. Yeah. Thank you. 
Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, and it goes back farther than that because I went to grad school to get a film degree because I took classes with Brady in the early 80s. Um, I had graduated with a creative writing degree and had no film experience and was able to do classes here. So I, you know, so you all. were a student first. I was a student first and then came back and then Brady called me while I was still in grad school and said, hey, do you want to teach a class? And I was like, yeah. I said, do you want to start next week? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why not? I'll do one semester. And then 30 years later. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of emotional. I get really emotional when I go to the library. Um, so, but um, in a weird way, I've sort of been, a lot of my students are still here, but a lot of them I've sort of sent off into world, so this just feels like a bigger version of that, that makes any sense. One thing I want to say real quick, though, uh, about like what we were talking about, emotional, uh, about the place. Uh, when I reached out to some people uh, to do, I asked for you know, two to three sentences, uh, very brief, to place in uh, the doc documentary that, that I was making. But what I found was so many people like came back with like such like very long emotional uh, really like uh, uh, sad you know uh, and memories of Pittsburgh filmmakers and you know they, they went on for a long time like much more than I expected and Richie Sherman who showed a piece uh, tonight I'd actually reached out to him to do a voice in my piece I don't know if he misunderstood or what, but <laughs> last night he texted me. He was like, "I'm getting it ready." I was like, "Oh God, like uh, I got to get this done." And then at noon earlier today, he sent me. Uh, I guess I don't know if he misunderstood or what, but he made that piece last uh, night uh, uh, with the baby doll hands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the one with the baby dolls. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody has a question, please throw it. <laughs> Ross, sixteen. I thought it was a nice way to end the program. Oh, well, thanks. So. We are so many. That was fun. That yeah. was really well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll maybe give you something uh, brief and kind of tied in. So it is related to uh, the, the building uh, in a roundabout way. So uh, I made this thing almost 10 years ago. Um, so, and I was worked with a lot of these folks here and in this space and through Film Kitchen is how I uh, became a <coughs> Pittsburgh filmmakers. This goes to 2002 or one, 2001. Um, so you're a kid and you're at school, this is an elementary school, and you know, they would bring us all into one auditorium, K through three, uh, rural school, about an hour and a half north of here. Um, and you usually knew what was going to happen that day with some like dumb assembly or like go sell some sausage or cheese or toys or whatever. Um, but when they wouldn't tell us what was happening was movie day, right? And I remember we'd be going down like in the queue, going down the steps to go into uh, the cafeteria, right, the, the, the seating went up into the walls, sit on the floor, um, and you would just, everyone was freaking out, it was movie day, right, and this is why, you would go in, you'd sit down, shut up, you know, you had to sit, and then um, films would start, and there was 16 millimeter films, Kodachrome, um, and there was uh, this guy, Tom Diaz, um, and he would stand there and did his best kind of Ranger Rick routine, <laughs> never looked at the screen once, and he always had it, and here's the beaver, and when you're six, you're like, whoa, what's going on? Um, and he, this is how this guy made his career for 30 years. Um, he only ever shot Kodachrome, he stopped shooting film, um, that's a very vivid uh, reversal color for this whatever can switch. Um, so uh, it was a formative experience. He would have one reel of film that was uh, Galapagos Islands or something, and he would talk all about it, right? And then there'd be, he always did something in your backyard, right? So it'd be uh, white-tailed deer or something. And it sort of like expanded my uh, a sense of the world and there's something tactile about it. Um, shared this experience with a friend, uh, Tony Balco, that many of you know, uh, while we're hanging out in the theaters, as Sam described there, waiting for movies to end. We had the same experience. Um, and then about five years later, um, he called Pittsburgh filmmakers, Tom Diamonds did. Um, I believe Tony answered and Mike Bonello interacted with him. And we got to go out to his house 10 years ago. Um, he, he passed in 2014, um, but he sort of laid out his life for us and he made a living uh, shooting uh, film. 
Um, and then he worked, he toured six months out of the year during the school year and just hit up like Western Pennsylvania showing these uh, films, right? He was, he was very much, uh, it was not involved with Pittsburgh co-makers, but his sort of uh, style and, and the way that he, he thought about making films. Um, so I got my hands on some of his outtakes and his blessing and I did some, I did that. So. Can, I, can I just say, while we're still on the subject of Ross, um, this was like the ultimate Pittsburgh filmmakers moment. Not only, what a lot of you didn't see, because I was in the back row, is that he was just showing the three movies, but there was a performative aspect to it, where he's blocking one projector or another at different times, and that was really important. But even just before that, when the house lights wouldn't go down, Laura Jean just walked out and turned them down, and that's the Pittsburgh filmmakers <laughs> spirit, is everybody pitches in and everybody knows what to do. Yeah. Set the people in charge at the top. You know, I I think it's I think of it as a nature or film. This is a real place. It's a roadside attraction. Uh, it's a Linesville spillway. You can get a T-shirt that says "Where the ducks walk on the fishes' backs." Yeah. <laughs> You're right, right. So uh, you can actually see 50 yards of, of like tarp, right? Fish, like, so, and you would stop and throw. So um, as a kid, I was fucking traumatized. It's horrible. <laughs> it's, what, it's what poor people do. You go and you buy a day old loaf of bread off the Schrebel's truck for a dollar. You get a whole loaf, and then, you know, like your parents would be like, not more than one at a time. Try to stretch that afternoon out. Uh, and you, you throw out the ducks, and then the ducks don't miss them. But they do. They walk on the, some of you have experienced this. Um, it's terrifying when you're a kid. You're like, what the hell am I doing this? Um, so the soundtrack was really, a, you know, it was a collage of a variety of sounds. Uh, some found, some I had permission to use. Um, and, and just wanted to add that abrasive texture to, to that otherwise kind of beautiful um, experience. Um, and those are, um, so I printed from Kodachrome, I printed um, three strands of black and white, and then there are uh, red, green, and blue gels on the projector that's all so you can manipulate that way after the printing. So <coughs> well, I, I loved uh, your piece. You took class shoots with that opening shot where it's uh, different people just kind of walking through each other in different colors. Yeah, thank you. No, it does my Pinellas.
the, the only one that was just a projector. Yeah. And you sent me that almost immediately when the call for artists went out. I thought, how, how many am I going to get? Yours was the best. That's why I only showed yours. Uh, that was another one, but it was great. I think, uh, yeah, I didn't fully understand what you were asking. <laughs> well, I thought that they came to show up. I really thought it was a way to uh, yeah. just get the And you were like, how does on. this relate to the Pittsburgh filmmakers? And I was like, well, I was shot in in John's class, and um, Mike Pinello helped me work the projector and figure it out. And, and like, I just thought that was always such a, a wonderful thing about being here was that like you could just like bring in some random equipment and be like hey can somebody teach me help me figure it out and and, and there was always somebody who did and could and so um that was always something i really i, I love about being here i mean i i uh, was photo faculty and um and then i took filmmaking classes from will and, and john and um and i used to want to like study filmmaking and I just went in the direction of photography for a long time and it wasn't until it was in my 30s and I came, came here and started teaching and, and uh, one of the perks of teaching was that you got classes for free and I did and so it was like the first time I actually got to take filmmaking production classes was through that so I was really grateful for that and to be able to to have that experience with everybody here and all them sharing their knowledge was really cool experience. I just had an email from um, a woman, Shawana Spong, that um, is from New Zealand, that she came and did a residency here uh, a couple years ago, and um, and we we talked about the Folex. Mike began taught me how to use it, um, and we made a film. And she's doing her PhD in uh, London, and she's like, I've been raving to everybody about how amazing the filmmakers is, and how it's such a unique place that doesn't exist anywhere else. That she's been to. Well, so, um, so I think that that you know has pulled a lot of weight. Yes. Carolina, I took your class in 2003. I've been here ever since. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight, before your movie, you talked about the first first works grant mm -hmm. that helped you uh, uh, make that movie. Yep. Tell us a little bit about what that was like and how that empowers a filmmaker to. Well, it's, it's really important because I was a student back then. I was at CMU and I had just arrived here. The, the, actually, when I came here for the first time, it was in 95, and I was here for a semester, and that was the first time that I took film class here, right? Uh, film one with Susan Howard. Um, and I also took the same class I took to with Bill Jackson, right? But he was teaching it at Pitt back then. Uh, the experimental film and cinema, and, and those, the combination of those two classes plus a video art class at CMU, you know, really opened up this field that was unknown in Chile, where I was coming from, right? Um, um, after all of the dictatorship, film, you know, had been pretty much, um, um, well, d destroyed in the sense that the schools that had offered film before the dictatorship were, sh were shut down and there was no film industry. Right? Um, so for me, that realization was like, wow, I found my tribe, that's what I want to do. So they prompted me to come back to, you know, attempt to go to grad school, and I got in, and, and so that's when, you know, I, I saw the, the, the announcement for the First Works grant, and I applied, and, and I got one. I got $600. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, and I made the, you know, um, I made, made the, the, the best uh, out of it. And, and then through the years, Filmmakers has been such an important organization for me, because I took more classes here. I took the, my personal linear editing class with Pierre Martin. <laughs> and the TA for that class was Chris Frodo. And met him there and over to friends. He's the godfather for my daughter, you know, like it's like you form those kind of friendships forever. And um, and then I was a teacher, you know. Um, Brady was nice enough to trust me with, you know, teaching into the digital and I taught here for about three years, I think. And I thought that class um, and Gary was also so nice that, you know, that he allowed me to show many films at the film festival and, you know, allowed me to use his space for screenings of films that I was shooting. And Will allowed me to, you know, workshop my documentary through the documentary salon. And so I am in such, you know, huge debt to so many people here that, you know, have really helped me and helped each other have careers in independent filmmaking. Um, and be able to experiment and explore. Um, I, I 
I've been very, you know, I've witnessed with a lot of sadness through the past years what's been happening, you know, to There's not really understanding how an organization that was thriving and that was so pivotal for this community that is so well represented tonight has just crumbled and, and come to what's happening today. It's very hard to see. Uh, sorry, Jean, someone's got a silver compact Jeep. The alarm is going off. Park out front. <coughs> it's all right. It, it's my stolen car. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many. So David, I feel like you and I didn't have a whole lot of overlap, like when I was working here on like a daily basis as filmmakers. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you, I, I wanted to program some stuff like maybe for people that were slightly newer to the organization or working here. But I really don't even know when you like started uh, working at filmmaker, so I don't know if you're newer or not. Sure. I, yeah, I feel like an odd duck a bit because I, I never took a film class or um, I only started screening films here about five years ago when I became a member. That's a long time. Yeah, so it's been great ever since then, and I feel like I've been finding a bit of that community through that, and now it's kind of being torn down, but, but it will continue. But maybe one thing worth saying is that uh, when I start coming to films here in 2000 or 99 or so, um, maybe being a, a younger age, I kind of conflated filmmakers with Pittsburgh. So um, when I was playing in bands and seeing like Johnson's and Dirty Faces and stuff like that, all that stuff and Pittsburgh all seem like one thing. And you know, as you age and exist longer, uh, divisions seem to crop up and delineations. But you know, it's, the filmmakers just felt like Pittsburgh to me, and it's changed a bit. But uh, you know, I, I, I think uh, it's always been a presence, and I hope it continues. So, the last worker we haven't talked to yet is uh, tentatively a convenience. I'm going to stack them to the light. So that my shot isn't as bad as the last shot was of David. Sorry about that, David. Uh, one thing I want to say is that even though I'm really, really happy to see so many great people here tonight who I've uh, enjoyed the company of and respected over the years, I'd also like to rattle off an off the top of my head list of all the people who aren't here who were also who were incredible uh, participants in this community while they were in town. So people like Jesse McLean, Eric Fleischauer, Gordon Nelson. Uh, Greg Pierce and Michael Johnson still live here, but I don't see them here tonight, or I didn't notice them. I think they're probably not here, but uh, uh, Jim Mueller, if I didn't already say him, uh, uh, Tony Balka, who's already mentioned once, uh, Olivia Chumo, uh, and I'm sure I'm just forgetting an enormous amount of people right now, but it's important to mention these people because Pittsburgh Filmmakers has not only fostered a community that stayed in Pittsburgh, it's also fostered a community that has spread its seeds all over the place. And uh, those seeds have produced mutants that are currently uh, taking over the whole world, but kind of at an incredibly slow pace, so we still have rump to deal with. But that's all right. Rump can only shit on us for so long, but, you know, whatever. Uh, so thank you to everyone including this everyone here and uh, I don't there's plenty more I could say but I talk a lot anyway so we'll stop myself thank you we're continuing a Q&A well, people want to hang out they can like talk about things after this we'll call at the end of the show what? I'll give all that this one one supreme argument you told all the filmmakers to come down here. Mike Bonello didn't follow instructions. That was a class shoot. And he still works here. <laughs> <laughs> that was a class shoot. I didn't make that. That was my students. Uh, <laughs> uh, then I take it back. Also, you, you're a filmmaker as well. Yeah. 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 Life altering effect on my life. There's everybody in here. It's like uh, if you died and went to heaven, somehow this is kind of like what it would be like. <laughs> it's like everybody. You just look around and there's so many like positive things. Uh, yeah, I thought I went to heaven, I'd be sitting, not standing. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice to see everybody back here again. So 
many people have been gone for so long. They have to so slowly. I don't know if I really totally realized until uh, it's nice to everyone here. It's very, very nice to see us all together again. And thanks for all your work. Don't worry. Yeah. I've, I've, you've done a great job, Terry. Well, thank you everyone for coming out, and thank you for our filmmakers, everyone here who's been part of the filmmaking community. Willie James is here. He's supposed to be showing movies next month. We'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, what do you, what do you want to chat about? Oh, uh, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Tell me what your feelings are at the moment relevant to Pittsburgh filmmakers in the Melwood screening room and this building and this facility and your relationship to filmmaking in general and your relation to the posters that are up on the wall. Just just start just start blabbering. Uh, well, the posters, that's easy. Uh, yeah, so um, I'll put these up. Um, Although you were given credit as Stephen Hines, I yeah. believe, instead of Stephen it Hines. It happens. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it doesn't really bother me. Uh, yeah, the posters actually at one point were pretty much in the trash. They were in a box marked free. Uh, there were several boxes of free posters being given away in the uh, over by the EQ. I started going through a lot of, a lot of the junk, you know, uh, studio distributed ones. I started pulling these kind of ones out of there, which are significant and unique. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I, so I put a lot of those out. Um, and that, that was last year, actually. And we kind of started working to, to save them. Um, well, I'm glad you did. Yes. Yeah. it's a very choice selection of posters. Yeah. Uh, there's actually quite a few more as well. Uh, uh, when we decided to put them up for this, uh, for this event last week, um, Paulette here, and Paulette and I, wow, uh, dug through a ton of posters um, upstairs. Um, quite a few. So we, we actually, but there's probably about know, at least a hundred of, of these, oh, maybe great. two hundred of these in-house uh, posters out here. That'll that'll be preserved. Uh, well, I'm always grateful to people who preserve things as they're about to disappear. Yeah. I try to do that myself, but yeah. there are limits to our abilities to do it. Yeah. And space. I'm all about that. Uh, what do you have to say about these matters? All, all matters? Like, filmmakers closing? Like, Broadly, the, yeah. world? the world? <laughs> um, is it weird to say that I'm going to miss the smell of this place? It had a really distinct smell, and I was thinking about that tonight, about how, like, I don't know, the soap that they use and like lingering film chemicals and printing press and everything, you can always smell that weird mixture. And it's one of those things they always say sense memory is the strongest smell and I feel like I'm gonna remember that scent. <laughs> well, you're the only person who's brought that up so far, so I think that's particularly useful. All right. <laughs> I'll put that in my pipe and smoke it, as the expression yeah. has it. Yeah, exactly. I'll put that scent in my pipe and smoke it. <laughs> now, I'm not sure how that works, but at any rate, thank you very much for your contribution to this spontaneous record of tonight's yeah, I think it's Whatever awesome it is. that you are you're so unselfconscious you can just go around carrying the camera and filming everything. It's, um, yes, well, it takes a certain amount of uh, imperviousness to being a source of irritation to other people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. uh, in practice, I'm sure you have, to, you have to work at it. I do, I do. Yeah. You look really wide. No, 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 your face looks okay. like a tiny detail. Even though I'm this close, your face looks like a tiny so, detail. Okay. So I had a film that was at the Two Rivers Film Festival um, one year, I forget what year, probably 2005, 2007 or something. And um, this was for shorts, and they screened it at the Harris Theater, and I brought my son, he was about six or seven, maybe seven or eight, I don't remember. So they showed the film, and then at the end they asked people to um, come up on stage and talk about or see if there's a Q&A, and they asked the audience if there were any questions, and my son raised his hand, and he stood up and he said, yes, I'd like to know why you haven't paid your Pittsburgh Filmworkers membership dues. He said that to you? Yeah. So <laughs> I was like, I... <laughs> and I didn't Did you, you didn't put him up that. on that? You didn't put him up to that? That's hilarious. That you know, the first time I met you, or the first time I saw you, was at the Oakland Avenue Filmmakers in 1995. Oh, that was 
Yeah. At least I think it was. I was there. Well, this would have been in January of 1995, and I, I was just visiting Pittsburgh doing shows under the auspices of Oregon Cinema, and hadn't moved to Pittsburgh yet. Shows the people how meaningful it is, and has its people closer together with the, the kind of things they see, and and also that they all feel like a family. Because I've been a small group of play violin, and sometimes we play a different instrument. And they're small, and just doing doing it for each other, not for any money. And and I just think it's important. No, because the world is falling apart. This is not good because no, no, no. No, that's, I the sound that I got is what I really mean is um, they, they don't have any they t- take it away the earth is taken away we can't yeah. certain things can't uh, be born anymore because they they're closed off the, well, ecologically, if they don't have the right nurturing situation, they won't exist anymore. Even it's supposed to be the certain places, like there's maybe the place in Canada that there's only one kind of a dog or an animal. And we can't mess with it. Another doesn't seem like this person. We can say it. I've given 41 screenings here in the last 22 years, and I do consider this place to be incredibly important, one of perhaps the three most important movie-making institutions in the country, and if it goes down, it is not a testimonial to the ability of this fine city to support its cultural institutions. My name is Tentatively a Convenience, and I am saying goodbye now.